Hey everyone, thank you for watching. In today's video, I am so excited to do. It's going to be a chatty get ready with me on this look right here, but it is also an exciting day for me because the day this video goes up, Friday, November 22nd, is the official release date of my eighth novel. This is The Six Lauren, and I am so excited to have another book available for sale today. So if you guys don't know, I am a self-published author. Uh, this book is my eighth full-length novel that is releasing. It is the third book in the six series. And I'm going to be getting ready today and talking to you a little bit more about the book, what it's about, uh, a little bit about the entire series, and also where you can find the book. There is a giveaway in today's video and I'm just, I'm so excited this day is here. It's been almost a full year since I've it has been a full year since I have published my last book and I'm so thankful that this day has finally come. So if you would like to hear a little bit more about my eighth novel, see how I got this look and a little giveaway with two winners in today's video, why don't we go ahead and get started. Hello guys, well, welcome. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the get ready with me part because I definitely have a lot to say today. I will have everything linked that I am using down below. Some things are newer to me, some things aren't newer, but I'm not really focusing on each of the different products that I'm using today. I am just wanting to jump right in to the get ready with me. So the novel is The Six Lauren. I have the copy right here. This is my author copy, so it says not for resale actual copies won't have that on there but this is what I order early in advance so I can you know like go through it and see everything and make sure everything looks okay but this is my eighth book the six Lauren it's a part of the six series so there's two other books that are currently available in the series right now we have the six Christie which is book one and then the six Scarlet which is book two and then we follow with book three which is Lauren I do have a podcast if you guys haven't heard me talk about it or seen it anywhere else I started a podcast about seven weeks ago now a new episode goes up every Thursday and it's available on like Spotify and iTunes and Google Play and Stitcher and you know all of those places where you can find a podcast it's called Start Inspired but yesterday's episode um, was all about the book also so I always have my podcast links down below but in case you want to hear a little bit more or anything that I don't cover in today's video you can check out the podcast and I also do read an excerpt from the book from the six Lauren so you can hear me reading some of the book as well I like to make these videos every time I have a book release uh, just to obviously celebrate and talk about the book and let you know what it's about and where to find it and why I wrote it and all of that and I do have some giveaway boxes I have two different giveaway boxes to give away in today's video which I am also so excited about so um, to jump into a little bit about the six Lauren um, you know, I feel like I kind of have to touch on the whole series since it is a part of a series. But the six series follows six to six different girlfriends and it is based in Chicago. Definitely a big theme of all of the books is this friendship circle, is the, the friendship dynamic between these six individual women and the different hardships that can come with a friendship and uh, we learn in the second book a pretty big secret between two of the friends Something kind of shocking comes out in book two. I know I got so many messages from readers when that happened and It was so funny um, So to hear everybody talking about it and just having conversations about these characters. It was such a good time and uh, so we kind of see how everybody reacts to that because it really only involves two of the girls but really it involves all of the other friends too and I think I write a lot of friendship fiction and I think female friendships are just very fascinating I've you know I've lost friendships in my 32 years I've had toxic friendships and I just think especially like a group of friends a group of female friends it's just interesting to learn about so it's been a lot of fun writing the series uh, understanding each of the different girls and how they react to different situations and it's that's been a lot of fun so in the first book Christy she is single and she even though she has some like frisky dating stories to share she she really would like to find uh, 
a, a boyfriend and all of that so we kind of go through some of her dating stories and and what she has going on so have her personal life of course her job is an, el an elementary school guidance counselor and you know i've talked when christy was released that there's a scene in there that is actually a scene from my life when i was talking to my elementary school guidance counselor about going through an abusive situation uh, i actually wrote that scene into christy's book and um, that was definitely really emotional for me and we see how she leans on her friends for support when she's going through that situation and uh and all of that and in christy's story we start to learn that something is wrong with scarlet who's going to be character number two we understand that she's having some friendship issues with her best friend in the group you know all of these six girls are close friends everybody's really tight with one another but everyone has kind of like their bff their go-to in the group and that's something that i've noticed with female friendships over the years like you know you can have a group of six or ten friends that are all really good friends and they all really like to hang out together but there's that typically that one person that you really rely on the one person that you always call the one person that you always make sure is invited to everything and that's what you get in this series too but it's also really interesting and you know to me with with friendships you see how they change and grow and evolve and shift and separate over the years i've seen it with friends who have you know gotten married before me or had children before me or even something like getting a dog like one of the reasons i became really close friends with 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 with, with one of my best friends is because we were the only two people in our group of friends that had large dogs i had aries and she had a german shepherd and we would rely on each other to watch each other's dogs because a lot of our friends either didn't have dogs or couldn't have dogs at their you know apartments and stuff or they had small dogs and we didn't feel comfortable with our big dogs around the small dogs and all of that so that was one reason like we were already friends we already knew each other we hung out in the same group but we started to rely on each other because of our dogs and then we just got closer and closer and closer as time went on so um you kind of get that in the book too you hear some backstory of you know at one point in college these two girls were really close but then they you know they moved out or you know one got into a relationship and things shifted and now these two are really close and in Christy's book, you can see that she has her bestie and Scarlett has her bestie, but because of certain situations happening, Scarlett and Christy are getting really close to one another. And I think it's just interesting as an author, but also just as a person in general, to explore that and to understand why we kind of have these shifts in, in friendships. So we know from Christy's story that something's going on with Scarlett, but in Scarlett's story in book two, we really understand what's going on. We see her having a toxic friendship with her best friend in the group who is Tinsley and trying to understand what to do. But a big aspect of Scarlett, and even as she's going through this and she knows that she has these other girlfriends that she can rely on, she feels very uncomfortable going to her friends and saying what's happening because she's afraid of what it will do to that tight friendship of six. She doesn't want people to be mad at Tinsley. She doesn't want to have a, kind of a split in friendship. She doesn't want people to take sides. So she's trying to figure it out for herself. Like, how can I keep this friendship going but still stand up for myself, not be a doormat, and not be treated as badly as she was being treated by Tinsley? So we really see this internal struggle that Scarlett is going through of really wanting help but being afraid to go to her friends. And she actually turns to a coworker to really help her, someone who's not in her friendship group and who can kind of offer unbiased help and information and feedback on maybe what to do. So we see Scarlett start to rely on someone outside of the group for help. And I really related to that too because there's been times where I've been struggling with a friend, but I don't want to go to our other friends and talk about it because I don't want to make it seem like I'm talking badly about another person's friend too. But it's like I, I want help or advice or feedback, but I'm not trying to be disrespectful for to another person in our group of friends. It's really hard, it's really tricky. So it was it was really interesting to write Scarlett's point of view and see how she was trying to really handle everything. I had a lot of fun writing those scenes and just kind of 
I mean, just trying to learn as a person too. I think that's really fascinating and something that I get to do with my writing. So uh, we see that happening. And then at the same time, um, Scarlett's also dealing with a broken heart. She was dumped really suddenly by someone who she thought was her forever person someone who they were discussing moving in together and she thought maybe a proposal would be on the way and just all of a sudden one day out of the blue he breaks up with her and she's really still trying to understand what happened and you know how she's lost you know really the, the love of her life and then on top of everything that's going on with her friendships with her breakup she learns the big secret and this is really like a pinnacle moment for the entire friendship series that's happening because you start to see the split amongst friends it gets to be at too big of a level that scarlet can no longer protect her friend tinsley she can no longer not let the other girlfriends know what's happening and we get to see how everybody reacts to the situation of what happened so um you know, I get asked a lot, like, do my books have to be read in a particular order? And they don't. Uh, my my five books, my five other books are a standalone, but I would really recommend to read this series in order, starting with Christy, going to Scarlet, and then with Lauren, and then we'll have three more books to go. I do recommend reading the series in, in, in the order that they are because it really helps you understand. And especially with like Christy's book, we're kind of meeting everybody, seeing what's going on. Scarlet has the big bombshell in there and Lauren is kind of like the aftermath. What do they do now? You get to see everybody's reactions. You get to see the divide that starts happening, um, not only amongst the group of six, but among the best friends in the group. Once again, you're gonna start to see a shift in friendships because you know, two girls think one way, two girls think a completely different way, and then we have two girls that's, that's in the middle of everything. So it's really interesting to see how the girlfriends all react and it's been a lot of fun also in Lauren's story to write those reactions and to understand how people take the situation differently. Uh, so that's how we follow into Lauren's book and, and everything gets revealed in there to all of the friends and you know they're having to make the decisions of what it is that they're gonna do and how they're going to react. And then of course at the same time we have Lauren's personal life coming into play and Lauren is really struggling with her engagement. She's been with the same man since she was 16 years old. She's 26 years old now, but and they're engaged, they're living together in Chicago, but she knows it's not right. She knows deep down that she shouldn't marry this guy. And we also learn that from Scarlett's story that something is something's going on with Lauren. She's not your typical like excited bride to be. She avoids a lot of wedding talk. You can tell that something is happening and in her story she's really struggling with how did she even let it get this far how did she let an engagement even happen we get some of her backstory in college and some of the decisions that she made when she was with her her boyfriend at the time ben who's now her fiance and i think lauren's story is really interesting because I don't think that she's the most likable character. She has a little bit of like a tougher exterior. She's very career motivated to the point where she puts almost everything uh, on the back burner for to be able to move up in her career. But I also find her to be very relatable. And what was interesting to me is one of the first early reviews I got on this book from one of my beta readers was saying that Lauren's story could have been her own and I just thought that was so fascinating to hear. There are times where we make decisions and we think maybe something isn't right but it maybe it's you know it, it's the path that we're supposed to take you know Lauren was with her her boyfriend for so long it was obvious that they were going to live together and then they were going to uh, get engaged and then they were going to get married and probably kids would be on the way like that's how society has us set up that's how that's the plan that's the checklist 
but Lauren knew that that wasn't what she wanted. She knew that wasn't what she wanted for her future, but she let herself continue to go at it and get swept up in it. And it was comfortable and it was the norm. It was expected. But now that it's actually here and her wedding's only a few months away, she just knows in her heart that she can't go through with it. So we see her really struggling with those decisions and um, what to do and how to talk to her friends about it and we see the reactions of, you know, her closest friends and her best friends. And, you know, some of the reactions aren't maybe what you'd expect or what you would hope. But I think that they're, again, also really relatable. I like writing about characters that have flaws. I like writing about characters that screw up and make mistakes because that's reality. That's what we do as humans. We make mistakes and we learn from them and we continue to grow and we make bad decisions and then we make good decisions and that's who I want to write about. Not all of my books have happy endings. Not all of my books have the traditional happy ever afters. But that's not everyone's reality. And everybody's happily ever after looks different. And I think it's really cool that we do live in a society these days where you don't have to follow the checklist. You don't have to follow the norm. You can be your own person. You don't have to be labeled in certain boxes like it has to have been in the past years. And it gives me so much more freedom as a writer to write some of these stories and write some of these characters because I know someone out there is going to relate to the story and someone's going to think wow like this really sounds like me this sounds like a situation i went through or this sounds like a situation one of my friends went through and i reacted in a way that one of the characters did and i didn't like how she reacted but i reacted in that way like i just i love writing these types of stories i have so much fun with it and sometimes like sometimes I can't believe that this is what I get to do. I can't believe I'm on book number eight. Like I'm I'm so happy this is what I've wanted to do since I was nine, was write books. And that I get to do it and that I have these feelings. Every time I have a new book ready to release, it's just the coolest thing. And thank you guys for your support and thank you for your enthusiasm and purchasing the books and reviewing them and sending me messages so we can talk about the characters and talking to others online and that's just really the most awesome awesome thing for me as a writer and it makes me so grateful I'm really excited for you guys to read the story and hear what you think i know the friendship angle has definitely been one of the biggest things that's what i get the most messages about is what's going to happen and there's been a lot of guesses of whose story is going to come next. You'll you'll find out in uh, in Lauren's book. The back of the book has a clip from the next book that will be coming out. So you'll get to see who the next girlfriend is and see what, what storyline she already has playing out for her. I'm a little bit flustered with Lauren because it's taken me a year to put her out. So Scarlet released last year in October. And I released Christy in May of 2018. I released Scarlet in October of 2018. I wrote Scarlet in six weeks. That was the fastest I've ever written a book. Lauren, I just had a really challenging year. If you guys have you know, been keeping up with my YouTube channel and everything, you know that I just had a tough year. I had a tough year with my mental health, um, we also had a move in there so that was happening you know my husband lost his job in 2018 and that was a really difficult situation to go through i just had such a challenging time writing and it was so hard for me and really like when i would talk about it and i would talk about you know almost being like frustrated with myself that i wasn't getting as much done I had so much support from the community that really encouraged me to, you know what, even if you can't hit your full writing goals today, just open up that Word document and give it your best shot. And I'm so grateful for that. Um, you know, there's a dedication at the beginning of every book and Lauren and, and Lauren is dedicated to my Sam Squad because you guys had my back through everything that I went through last year. 
And I'm so grateful for that. All of the messages and the support that came in was just amazing. So that's who this book is dedicated to, is to all of you guys. Because I appreciate it so much. Not even just supporting my my novels and my books, but just supporting me in general has been has been so crazy for me to see and to understand my reach and to understand that people are connecting with me and my stories and my and the characters that I create and it's just such an incredible feeling to me and I'm so grateful for that and I you know it's even what I talked about with winning at the American Influencer Awards I'm pretty sure I was the smallest person number wise to be nominated and definitely to win and I wasn't very like I'm gonna try to put this in the best way like I wasn't very like recognized by the award show like I wasn't scheduled to have an interview on the pink carpet whereas I think almost every other nominee did and they, the American Influencer Awards like posted on their Instagram a photo of a bunch of the different winners and I wasn't included on there and that's fine. Like the American Influencer Awards I believe was very like Instagram focused which I, I, I mentioned this in my live chat when I was talking about the show but um, I think that's why I got nominated under skincare because I do a lot of skincare videos on my Instagram and a lot of skincare posts in general on my Instagram. Very easy for me to look at the categories, look at the nominees, look at the winners and understand that I didn't really fit in. Don't, and I'm gonna use this term politely, like I, I don't mean anything negative about it, but there was like a lot of insta baddies at the award show, you know what I'm saying? Again, I don't mean that like in a disrespectful way, it's just like kind of the best way I can describe kind of like the aura and the vibe of everything. And then there was me. Like I, I didn't feel like I really fit in. And even with where I was seated, like the from what I could tell from like the people who were winning the nominees were really in like the middle section and I was completely off to the right like the farthest you could get from the stage and so when I win I mean I had a mile and a half to walk to get to the stage and you know I just kind of thought like okay most of the nominees are sitting in this one particular area like I don't think that probably the award show expected me to get as many votes as I did to have to win and that's okay that's fine because what that showed me is how loyal my Sam squad is how many people I have out there rooting for me and yeah I don't have millions of followers and hundreds and thousands of subscribers but I have people from all over the world that support what I do, that root for me faithfully, and that I consider my friends. That means more to me than having a million behind my name. That means more to me than being interviewed on a carpet or having my photo shown in the winner's post that they did because Look at the impact that my little community had. That's crazy to me. I have a hard thing too because it's like, as I continue to do this, like, do I want to grow? Like, yeah, definitely, of course. And I get excited when I hit new milestones and that's really fun for me. But what I continue to try to strive for is the connection between myself and my audience and still trying to be in my comments just as much still trying to be in my instagram just as much still trying to um you know talk to people on twitter still doing the live chats that's what i want to keep my focus on and not have it be on the numbers so of course you know big numbers are great and it's really fancy to say like oh you know i have this many subscribers now or this many followers and that's awesome and it does help you get noticed of course by by brands and everything and it's nice to be able to find 
new people that genuinely want to support you or they understand your message or you know all of those good things like that's great but to me the connection means so much more and my community continues to show me that over and over and over again and that's something that I do not take for granted and I'm so thankful for. That was just a bit of a sidebar. I'm not even really sure how I got on that conversation, but um, I guess basically I'm just trying to say thank you to everyone who's been supporting me. It's been really amazing and like I was saying, the year has been really tough and I got through it as best as I could because of so many of you. And I'm so appreciative of that. So that's why Lauren is is dedicated to my Sam squad. I know I was also saying that it took me longer to write Lauren just because of, of everything that I was, was going through. But once I started to finally have it all come together and I got the first draft down and I would talk about it online and people were so excited and they're like, I, I just want to see what's happening next with the story and because you know it's a series so we kind of get, we know what's going on at the end and it's going to trickle over to the next book. So it's like people are really wanting to see what's happening and, and what's going to happen with all of the friends and once I finally got out of just like this funk that I was in for so long, I just started getting so excited and I couldn't wait to put this book out. So. I'm so excited that this day is here. It feels like it's taken forever for me to come out with a book. I genuinely hope the next book doesn't take nearly as long. I don't think it'll be quick as Scarlet because I don't know if I will ever be able to do that again in my lifetime because that was just something totally crazy. I just have so many of you to to really thank for continuing to push me and and motivate me and for just simply your enthusiasm for really wanting to see this story and see how all of the characters that you have gotten to know how they're going to play out and I can't wait to get your feedback. I can't wait to to start talking to you guys about what's happening. A little bit about the book and about the series and so to find the book um, there is the Kindle versions that are available now. Uh, the Kindle version was available for pre-order on Amazon. If you did pre-order it, it does get sent directly to your Kindle. Kindle books are up and they're available now. The Kindle copies are $3.99 if you want to purchase the, the Kindle books. Um, I'll have all these links down below, of course, if you're, if you're wanting to grab them. The print copy should also be up there on the Amazon page. It takes a little bit to link them um, to link the, like all the different, uh, versions of the book. And it takes a little bit to link the whole series together too. So I have requests into Amazon cause they have to like manually do it. So I have to send in an email and say like, please link these books and everything. So, um, that should be, that should be coming and everything, but the, the print copies will be available on, on Amazon. Also, they are $16.95 when you order on Amazon and they get shipped through Amazon. If you have Amazon Prime, the books will be available under the Prime shipping and all that good stuff. There is also the option to purchase a signed print copy on my website if you do want a signed copy. Um, I know a lot of people really like signed copies. I learned that with Christy and then I really learned it with Scarlett. And the day that I'm filming this on Thursday, the print copies have gone up and I know so many of orders have already come in for Lauren and for Christy and for Scarlett and it's been so exciting for me and I'm so overwhelmed by the support. It's just so crazy to me that it's so crazy to me that people want to read my stories and read my characters. I'm so thankful for that. And um, so I'll have the link to my blog down below. There's the option to purchase uh, Lauren at the $14.95 and then there's a flat shipping for $4. Or there's options to purchase Lauren and Scarlett and also Lauren, Scarlett, and Christy. And then if you purchase the other books, it still remains that flat four dollar shipping so there's like shipping discounts put into those bundles there and then you're just paying for the books um i have hired someone to work on my website for me to create like a shopping page and everything so we're gonna have that available soon hopefully uh, i really wanted to have it in time for this release but we've run into like some questions with 
like taxes and I mean just like all this other stuff that I just want to verify and make sure and get it correct um, before we open up that that uh, shopping page on the website but I have someone hired to help me with that because I mean truly in the past I think defining her was the first time I opened a book for signed print copies like I didn't really besides like my family and my friends I would just order those books you know for them and it was no big deal and I think it was defining her that was like the first time people were asking me like can you sign my book and I'm like okay like sure I can do that and so I've always just kind of put a PayPal button on the website and you know ha had some orders come in that way and Christy and Scarlett really just blew me out of the water and Lauren already has totally blown me out of the water I was already crying this morning and trying to talk on my Instagram stories about how excited and how thankful I was that people are still wanting to purchase these books from me and it really made me realize that I need to streamline the the process of buying my books and having just an easier setup not only for me because I handwrite every single envelope and then I go to the post office and they have to type in like I don't have shipping labels the post office has to do each envelope manually and I'm pretty sure the post office where I just moved to is going to hate me because I feel like every time I go in there to ship a box which is like twice a week with all the giveaways and just like packages I try to send out they always seem annoyed by me so they're about to be real annoyed by, annoyed by me so I want to make an easier process of like having shipping labels and having automatically you know emailing um tracking numbers and all of that so I I have hired someone to help me out with that process so it's easier for me but also easier for you it's just a smoother transaction of checking out and having all of my books in one place and having different book bundles and shipping discounts and that's that's what I'm working on right now. Like I was saying on my Instagram stories this morning, I feel like it's almost hard for me to believe that people are supporting my author career and supporting it so much because, you know, I am a beauty YouTube channel and that's how I'm kind of most well known in the social space. You know, I've been blogging for 10 years and even though I've been publishing books for eight years, I'm still in the social media world kind of best well known for beauty and makeup and all of that and to see how many of you support my books and want to read them it's such an overwhelming feeling for me and amazing oh so i'm you know I, I have someone hired to to put all that stuff together and i just really want to make sure it's right like i was even saying on the phone um on the phone the other night saying like I remember when Jaclyn Hill's lipsticks launched and the taxes weren't right for everybody it's like we need to figure that out like we just need to make sure everything is fine if I'm gonna like really have like this retail portion of my website too like I just you know it kind of touches back to the episode that I had here on YouTube talking about like there's things that I don't do because I'm afraid I'm going to make a mistake and people are going to hate me for it but I can't I can't not try to elevate myself and be because I'm afraid to make a mistake. I mean, that's just not an okay way to live your life. That's not the message I want to bring to my audience of don't try in case you screw up. That's a that's a, that's not a good way to to live life and that's not how I want to do it and that's not the message I want to give. So, you know, I'm still trying to make sure I have everything correct and you know, not just like randomly putting something up there otherwise something would already be you know up there and I'd be like well whatever like let's just see what happens I do still want to try to make things correct off the first go um so so again uh, something something a little bit more professional will be coming but it's kind of one of those things where I've never really needed that you know there's yeah there's been my friends and family that have wanted books but I've never had this strong of a of, I'm gonna use the word readership. I don't, is that what I just make that up? But I've never had that that this kind of sense of support and this kind of enthusiasm for my books. And I'm I think I'm still kind of in shock. And I, I think I'm still kind of in disbelief that this has happened to me because I've worked so hard. I've worked for so many years at this, and to see it starting to have this type of success. It just, it almost makes me feel like 
do I deserve this? Like I have those types of feelings. And I, like almost sometimes I still think like this shouldn't be happening. Like I still need to pay my dues and work my way up. And I'm like, you've been doing this for a decade. Like you've put in so much, you've put in so much time. You've, you've worked for free. You've, you've given away your books for free. You, you know, I, I have, I have done that. And I have worked really hard to get to where I am. And I just need to accept it. I'm, I'm really bad at giving myself kudos. I'm really bad at saying to myself, like, you go girl. Like I'm, and I'm the first person to like encourage other people and tell others that, you know, you can do whatever and you're so amazing. And, you know, you do deserve this, but I'm really bad at telling myself that. And it's something that I want to get better at. It's something that I've been working on this year. It's definitely one of my like resolutions or goals for 2020 as we wind down 2019 and start looking ahead to the new year. That's one of the things that I want to work on for myself is being able to clap for myself. So like I was saying, you can purchase the signed copies on my blog, which is chickletplus.com. There's a checkout form all the way at the bottom for US customers. And uh, if you are an international customer, I have a form on the website too. And I just have you fill out that form because international shipping is really, really hard to figure out. Um, it's It can be also quite expensive. I know I just shipped to the Netherlands um, the other week. Someone bought Christy and Scarlett and I shipped them out and it was like $26 or something like that to ship the book. So um, I just kind of, I'll contact you directly to let you know about like how long it would take to get to you and the shipping costs and we work something out and you can let me know which books you want to order and all of that. Um, so if you're an international customer, you'll fill out that form. If you're a US customer, if you scroll to the bottom, you'll have the option of which books in the six series that you want to purchase. And again, we're working on that more professional page that will have all my books on there. We'll have the option to bundle the different books and everything. And thank you. I'm so overwhelmed by this. I know I'm going to start to cry again. So overwhelmed by this. I'm so grateful and I'm just so excited another book is here. And I, I can't believe that I get to keep doing this. And I am also working on getting the audio version for Lauren. I have been looking into seeing if I can record it myself. I know so many of you ask if I can do my own narration and I'm trying to see if there's a way that I can make it work. It's really, really complicated. It's not just having a microphone and speaking into it. Um, there's a lot of like software that gets involved with it and even just converting it into the audio file for the actual books is a whole different process in itself. But I know a lot of you have asked and I would love to do it. Um, I've tried to narrate books in the past. Unfortunately, the software didn't work out, but I've tried and I would love to do it. Uh, I just gotta make sure I can. So I've been working on that. If I can't, um, I, I do have a narrator that I can contact and um, pay for once again. She did the narration on Scarlett's book and uh, I know that I can reach out to her and ask her if she'd be available to do it once again but how I have it set up now I wouldn't even be able to contact her until the book is live and available for sale so um, that's we wouldn't be able to get started until that happened but I definitely am planning to have the audio version of Lauren also both uh, Chrissy and Scarlett are available as an audiobook too via Audible, so I will have their links down below if you like to listen to audiobooks. And yeah, those are all the places that the book is available. It's you know officially available as of Friday, November twenty second. I'm 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 so excited it's here. We're just finishing up with the skit ready with me. I know this video is probably gonna be really long, so sorry about that. But that's just kind of who I am and. I wanted to tell you about the book and it doesn't really make sense to just talk about Lauren's story without talking about the other girlfriends too. So wanted to give a little bit of info on the six series. Again, my other novels are available on Amazon also and they can be read in any order. My books, I get asked a lot the order of my books. Uh, Destined to Fail was my first novel. The Green Ticket comes next, A Questionable Friendship, which was one of my bestsellers and still personally one of my favorite books. That is my third novel. 
Then we have Up To I Do. That is the one that has the cover that is me and Mitch's actual wedding photo. It's not a book about our wedding. It's a book about a wedding, not ours. Um, but that is our wedding photo on the cover. The fifth book is Defining Her. It is a book that does have a warning on it because it has such uh, adult content. Um, so just be aware if you're maybe one of my younger readers or can't handle some of the topics in there. Uh, and then we move over into the six series and we have Christy, then Scarlett, then Lauren. If you guys do decide to purchase Lauren or any of the books, one of the biggest ways to support an author is to leave an Amazon review, especially an independent author um, who, you know, I don't have like a marketing team or a publishing house behind me. Leaving an Amazon review can be so, so helpful. It kind of like Amazon kind of works just like YouTube where the more you engage on a book page, the more Amazon takes notice of that book and helps promote it on their end. And so that's really awesome. So if you read the book, even if you have a more constructive review to give, even if it's not a five star review, it, again, it's just the same as YouTube, whether you thumbs up or thumbs down a video, whether you give a positive comment or a negative comment, it's just seen as engagement. And honestly, I mean, constructive reviews help me. They've, I mean, they've helped me in my career as a writer for sure. So um, just engaging on, on the book page can definitely be so very helpful. So um, yeah, if you do read the book and you'd be willing to write a review, that would be so helpful and I would be so thankful for that. For my lip combo, I'm using some of the new products that I grabbed from my latest Sephora haul, the Patrick Ta Lip Liner, and then Very Victoria from Charlotte Tilbury. Okay, so that is the Get Ready With Me. This is the look that I came up with. Again, everything that I use will be linked down below. Like I said, I also do have a giveaway in here, so definitely wanna chat with you guys about the giveaway. I love doing a giveaway to celebrate when I have new books coming out. It's just a way that I can say thank you to you guys and um, that I just appreciate your support. So I'm actually gonna have two winners for this giveaway. I have two different boxes. I'm gonna insert like some footage or some photos to show everything because I just have like large flat rate shipping boxes and I'm just gonna pack them as full as I can with products. So I'm gonna insert a little bit of what you can expect if you win one of the boxes, but I have um, like holiday products in there from NARS, there's brushes in there, there's skincare in both of them. Um, there is my favorite uh, Buxom blush, their primer infused blush. One box has Seychelles, one box has Dolly in there. Uh, my collab with Ofra is in both boxes, the March Beauty Word Highlight, and the March Beauty Word liquid lip set with three different liquid lipsticks from Ofra. Those are gonna be in both of the boxes. And um, yeah, there's Drunk Elephant in there. I'm just, I was, I had so much fun putting together these giveaway boxes. And like I said, there is going to be two different winners. So there is gonna be a form to fill out and you can find that on my website, Chick Lip Plus. So I will have the link in the description box, but that's where you're going to enter your information. So like I said, there are going to be two different giveaway boxes in there and make sure to just head over to chickletplus.com to enter in all of your information. I do have a couple bonus entries in there too for those of you who do purchase the book and do read it. Um, you don't have to read it to enter to win or anything like that. It is open for anybody, but those are just like a few like bonus questions that you'd get extra entries for into the giveaway if you do read the book. And I try to make them easy on you like in chapter six, like what is this? So you're not like trying to flip through the entire book. Like I know I read that part, but I can't remember where it was at. So I try to make it easy on you, but those are just bonus questions. Um, the only thing that you have to be doing to enter into the giveaway is to um, be following uh, my YouTube channel where you're watching this video. So just make sure that you're subscribed here if you want a thumbs up and leave a comment, you know, all that stuff is so great, but that's the only thing um, that you have to be doing. But there's gonna be some extra entries in there like following Instagram and Twitter and like my Amazon author page and, and different things like that and then I'll have those bonus questions for anyone who is reading the book but the giveaway is open to anybody my giveaways are open international there's gonna be the two boxes and I'm so excited I hope that you guys are excited for the giveaway I hope that you're excited for the new book and I just I'm just so thrilled that this day is here and I just want to say thank you I feel like my cheeks are because I've already been smiling so much today I'm just 
so grateful and excited and I know I need to wrap this up because I just keep saying thank you now. So make sure to check the description box. I'll have the links in there to purchase the book if you are interested in uh, purchasing The Sixth Lauren or any of my other books. I'll have the giveaway link in there. Make sure to fill that out if you want to win the two boxes. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed seeing this Get Ready With Me and hearing a little bit more about my next novel that is now available. Thank you guys so much for the support. Happy reading if you're reading any of my books and until next time, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.